Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Guys, today the topic hit me. So you want to be a medical coder. So we have to start off with what is a medical coder? Too many times I've had people come to me thinking that as a medical coder, I code healthcare, but I do it from the um, IT perspective. I set up codes in the uh, electronic medical record and that's not what a medical coder is. Let me first give you the definition of a medical coder based on what the AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders, how they define medical coding. The American Academy of Professional Coders say that medical coding is the transformation of healthcare diagnoses, procedures, medical services, and equipment into universal medical alphanumeric codes. The diagnoses and procedure codes are taken from medical record documentation, such as transcription of physician notes, laboratory and radiological results, and etc. Medical coding professionals help ensure the codes are applied correctly during medical billing processing, which includes abstracting information from documentation, assigning the appropriate codes, and creating a claim to be paid by insurance carriers. Medical coding happens every time you see a healthcare provider. The healthcare provider reviews your complaint and medical history, makes an expert assessment of what's wrong and how to treat you, and then documents your visit. That documentation is not only the patient's ongoing record, it's how the healthcare provider gets paid. Medical coding. So again, when I'm asked or as a medical coder, is that a computer coder? My answer in the past has always been no, but guys with the electronic medical record, we're getting more and more involved with the electronic side of the health record. So we're growing. We're seeing more and more electronic services done in the medical record. But let's talk a little more about the actual role of a medical record. What do medical coders code? We convert documentation in the medical record into classifications that identify diagnoses, procedures, supplies such as medication, equipment, devices, bandages, etc. and even ancillary services such as x-rays and lab, even the anesthesia that's admi administered during a procedure. As a coder, we code all of these. So who does medical coding? And the best way I can explain that is that individual that has an eye for detail. And a good example that I like to use when I try to describe this is my students from medical coding level one that are now in medical coding level three. I can remember when they started my program in medical coding level one, they said, what do we code? You say medical record documentation, but there's so much documentation in the medical record. Do we code? Patient came in with fever, sore throat, headache, abdominal pain, etc. What do we code? And I'm good for saying we code physician documentation, but my coders need to know exactly what physician documentation is. Like the history and physical, the op note, the discharge summary, different forms that are completed by the healthcare provider, because it's not just physicians that we code for, but those forms that are completed, that documentation that is completed by the healthcare provider that leads us to the diagnoses or the procedures to code. That person that needs to have that eye for detail and they know the coding guidelines. If you've watched any of my videos on this channel, you know I discuss coding guidelines all the time. There's a whole lot to that coding guideline, that 151 page document, the coding guidelines. 
that person that has read through them or can read through them and, and understand or get a basic understanding of them can come in and, and understand exactly what to code. And even someone that has an understanding of the documentation guidelines required by the accrediting bodies that are over your organization that you're coding for, or even standards of care. What exactly is required to be documented to meet standards of care for services that are rendered? That coder that, that can pick up, that has that eye for detail, that's the individual that would make a good coder. So when is medical coding completed? And you know, this is the million dollar question because I can share with you three times concurrently, which you'll see, well, let's start with retrospectively. Retrospectively is after the patient's already been discharged from the hospital. When the patient's been discharged and the chart is being closed out, that coder goes in and reviews that chart to determine the diagnoses and the procedures and the services that were rendered while that patient was in-house so that then we can bill the third-party payer for those services. But coding can be also be done concurrently while the patient is still in-house, while the patient is still in the hospital. A coder can go to the floor and review that chart and start documenting what's going on with the patient so that while that patient's in-house, should there be additional documentation needed, we still have access to the physician to get that documentation so that we can more accurately code the chart or that, physician's vi uh, that patient's visit. And then there's even prospective coding. Facilities know and they have an idea of what types of patients they can and cannot treat or care for. Do they have the providers? Do the, their providers have the training? Do they have the resources? These are questions that as a prospective um, coder, decisions are made to determine whether or not to even care for the patient. You hear a lot of patients come into the emergency room and they're transferred out to a higher skilled or a higher level of facility because that particular facility knows they can't handle the uh, acuity of the condition that your patient is going through. So prospective, the organization has already looked at, okay, insurance is going to reimburse this amount. Can we provide the necessary services to justify? So prospectively, it can be done as well. So it's concurrently, during the, while the patient's in-house, retrospectively after the patient's been discharged and then even prospective before the patient even comes in based on diagnoses that have been coded and sent to third-party payers we know whether or not or facilities know whether or not that type of service can be cared for or taken care of at their organization so again those are different times that coding can be done or completed so where where is medical coding performed? And you guys know we're seeing more and more coders moving home. They're going home to code. Um, but the way that I always answer this is that it is wherever the medical coder has access to the documentation. Wherever the medical coder has access to the documentation. Whether it's in the facility, in the physician's office, in the hospital, or even at home. And they have the access through their computers, through an internet access. They can tie into the hospital's um, system to do the coding. Wherever the medical coder has access to the documentation. And we're hearing more and more about remote medical coders. I'm hearing more and more, more and more of my friends are, are at home coding for one company Monday through Friday and doing some PRN or part-time work over the weekends. And it's because they have access at home to tie into facilities, electronic health records. And it's not just facilities in your hometown or in your state, because remember, 
I live in South Carolina. I've worked from home and I've coded for hospitals in California, hospitals in New York, even hospitals in North Carolina. It's wherever I have access to tie into their system and do their coding. So remote medical coding has been a, a big jump for medical coding services these days. So how do you become a medical coder? And the reason, way I answer that is, first, do your work, research. What type of candidate or student are you? Do you need face-to-face -face instruction? Or can you work online independently? Do you have the drive? Do you have the discipline to set a time up each week to do your work online without the requirement of being online at a certain time or being in a classroom setting at a certain time? If you've got that discipline and you can do an online course, then by all means, look for an on online medical coding program. But if you need a face-to-face -face medical coding program, that face-to-face -face training with somebody there to work with you, then make sure that's the type of program that you look to get into. And, and they're both. They're both kinds of programs out there. Um, luckily, Codemaster Coach does both. Just putting that in there. We do both. So in conclusion, I say a medical coding career is a rewarding career. It's got a lot of potential, a lot of avenues for you to make the career what you want it to be. I always knew I wanted health care. I wanted to work in health care. And I thought maybe being a physician, but then when I realized I couldn't take a lot of the blood and the, it hurts me to give people a shot or anything like that, I realized, no, I'm not a hands-on type person. But guys, with medical coding, I've got an opportunity to see healthcare firsthand, but yet I get to see the business side of it and the billing and the money as well. So I get to see hands-on patient care. I see it through reading the documentation. But then I also see the business side of it by rendering um, the billing to third-party payers, by looking at assigning codes to what's being done based on what's documented in the medical record. So it's, it's a rewarding career, but I've learned it's what I make of it. If I'm a go-getter and I go out there and I, I sell myself, I, I, I meet physicians, I meet healthcare providers and, sh and show them what I can do for them, I've learned I can make this career, this medical coding career, work for me. So, again, title of, that, of this video, I said, so you want to be a medical coder? My question to you is, do you want to be a medical coder? Do you really want to be a medical coder? In my next video, I want to talk about how do you prepare to be a medical coder because I've seen medical coding programs on the degree side of the college. An associate degree versus a continuing education side where they don't offer the degree. So which program is the right program or the right program for you? Okay guys, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Come on over. We're having fun over here. We're trying to really dive into medical coding and get a better understanding of what medical coding truly is. All right, guys, you can reach me at codemastercoach at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.